Hello everyone, it is the Banta Guy here, and welcome to a brand spanking new review. A very special one today for you, because I've been looking forward to this film that I'm about to review for a week, two, maybe two weeks now, and it finally came out, Man of Steel. Man of Steel, oh yeah. Superman is back with a much, much better m new movie, and honestly, I mean, you've got no idea the improvements from things like Superman 4 and Superman Returns. They were two freaking dreadful movies, and I think that's what put a lot of people off of the Superman films, but they are back right now with a brand new film, and it's great. So here's my chance to review it. So, where to start? Well, let's start at the beginning. Man of Steel opens with Krypton. Now, Krypton at this point is being ripped apart because the Kryptonian people have siphoned off the natural resources of their own planet, and one of their uh, sort of chief um, people, like one someone who's high up, I think he's supposed to be a warrior, played by Russell Crowe, is Superman's father, and he is sending his son in a Genesis device thing with um, a sort of sacred skull that contains the DNA of a, a billion different Kryptonians, and it feeds him super energy, is more powerful than any Kryptonian that has ever lived. And what's great about this is that Russell Crowe and his wife uh, conceived this child, and it was the first natural birth on Krypton in centuries. So it's a very interesting story. So basically, they, they sent him off to Earth to, to, to improve upon a planet that's quite new, quite young in its era, which is us, the humans, Earth. And he, he, uh, he basically has to try and make us good, m m not make the same mistakes that uh, Krypton made, which was siphoning off our resources. Hmm, sounds familiar. Oil, natural gas. That's why we're looking for solar energy and hydropower and so on. Anyway, getting back to the review. Um, <clears throat> then after all that's done, um, he arrives as a, as a young child and this, uh, this uh, farmer and his wife take in uh, Kal-El or Clark as he know, is known on Earth. And uh, I'm, I'm sure you're aware of the concept, but um, just for anyone who's new to it. Um, and, and, and they raise him as their own. And uh, while Superman, um, the, one of the things that the Kryptonian people do is they uh, they adapt to new surroundings. And Superman, uh, normally Kryptonians are adapted to the atmosphere in Krypton, um, but there's there's a reference to it in the film where later on uh, his mother tells an older Kal-El Clark that uh, when he was young he had trouble breathing, and that's because Kryptonians can adapt to different environments, but it takes a long time. And so Clark's adapt Kal-El is adapted to. Um, Earth's atmosphere while taking in the radiation of the sun to make his cells powerful and strong and uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's all really great um, and there's, there's a few sort of, it's, it's one of these sort of uh, flashback manipulative time jump things but it's not all that hard to figure out basically it jumps between him when he was about you know 8 to 10 and when he's like you know 25, 30-ish in human years and uh, but basically he uh, has memories of saving kids on this school bus by dragging a school bus out of the river when he was young and he can hear everything but his mother teaches him to hone his senses to only hear one thing and that comes into it later in terms of the vulnerability um, and as well as the fact that um, I, I love how it very slowly and surely shows the adaption of Superman as he goes through the film he gets more adept with his skills and more masterful of them, and he gets he gets more powerful as it goes through, and he gets he gets stronger and and um, just just better at being Superman. Basically, he can do these massive, huge kilometer jumps, and eventually he hones that into his flying capabilities, and he becomes super powerful. And uh, yeah, but um, back back on Krypton at the start, um, the the General Zod he was trying to stage a coup to harvest this. Uh, I can't remember what it's called now. It's it's this it's the thing that contains the DNA and genes of a, mil a billion different Kryptonians um, and basically this it's it looks like a skull like a really decrepit old skull and I can't remember what he calls it um it's like the Carallax or something anyway so, sorry about my terrible I'm just I'm just so happy about this film um but what did really experience for me was there was some there were there were two people sitting in front of me and they were how do I put this the great unwashed they had as far as I can tell, they were the sort of people that don't have a bath. They were the stereotypical nerd, basically. They had glasses, they had the greasiest hair you can imagine, and they're the sort of people who have a bath once a year. Not once a week, once a year. And they stank of burnt bacon. That is the best I can describe to them. And to the right of us, there were four drunk idiots who were making a whole lot of racket through the entire film, 
and were laughing and making stupid jokes and two of them had their freaking phone on despite the fact that there are plenty of adverts because I live in Britain and there were two adverts before the film starts saying switch off your phones for goodness sake and, and people like that really annoy me because you ruin film experiences for people who we have paid our money, we are here to see a film, we're not here to listen to your wittering and your freaking stupid laughing and I mean I was just, I was at the point by the end of the film I was at the brink of just standing up and saying, shut up, will you shut up, I'm trying to watch a freaking film, and if you're one of those people, well damn you, you deserve what you get from me in this freaking review, you prick, but whatever, back to the film, um, I lost my train of thought and I'm so angry at those freaking assholes, um, but yeah, no, 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 quick, quick rant on this, if you're one of those people, not, not, not one of those uh, they were here at the showing I went to, but if you are one of those people who makes a whole lot of noise, or if you stink, in a, in, you do not go to a cinema. You should be, there should be a device that they scan you with before you enter a cinema, and if you are too smelly, or you are drunk, freaking f*** off. Seriously, that is all I can say. And I'm probably going to have to bleep that out, but yes, that is, that is all you deserve. Now, get lost if you're one of those people. Regardless, if you're not one of those people, if you're a regular cinema viewer like me who wants to enjoy and see a brand new film, well, keep watching, because this, this review um, is probably going to be about 20 minutes or so. So, Zod is, he was staging a coup on Krypton to take over uh, the Kryptonian people and move to a new planet, uh, terraform it to be new Krypton. And uh, he ends up doing that on Earth later in the film, but anyway. So Clark is growing up, he's uh, honing his abilities, he's getting more powerful. Um, and uh, the the actor uh, who plays him, I've forgotten his name now, but uh, I'll get it in a minute. Um, never mind. Anyway, the, the actor plays him. He is a great actor, and I reckon he's going to be the next Hugh Jackman. He is a great actor. He's got that very chiselled look, quite muscular, quite tall, quite good looking. He's he's got a very um, how do I put this without sounding gay? Uh, very. Ad uh, I'm trying to put this right, but he's got he's got a very charming appeal to him, a bit like Daniel Craig. Had in Casino Royale, that sort of look. Anyway, um, yes, so he uh, hones his abilities, but one thing he finds was he's working uh, as a sort of a, a rookie at this Arctic facility, military facility, where they're studying the rock, like a like a geo glacier thing, but they found this piece of um, rock, or this piece of ice, rather, um, that's different to the ice around it, and the ice around it has supposed to be been there for 20,000 years, so uh, quite a long time. And uh, Kal-El, uh, being Superman, he, he finds it and he learns who he is here. And <laughs> Russell Crowe has this funny bit when he, when he, because he's a hologram as part of the ship's computer, he can zoom around and he's basically directing him where to go and very interesting. But basically, Kal-El learns that he's from a planet called Krypton, that uh, General Zod tried to overthrow by staging a coup, but was uh, shut down and locked away in a phantom dimension by zipping through into sort of this uh, sort of black hole teleporter wormhole thingy machine um, before Krypton finally exploded and uh, Zod was freed because the planet exploded and I guess the protocol, security protocols failed and he was released from the phantom zone. But uh, anyway. Progressing on, uh, Zod comes to Earth, uh, landing in a lunar orbit, and he basically hacks every mobile phone, every television service, every satellite, every computer, every uh, internet channel, ev everything that has telecommunication abilities, and basically broadcasts this message, you are not alone. You are not alone. And then basically he uh, demands that they give back one of their, one of the Zod's own, the Kryptonian people, and uh, which refers obviously to Kal-El, or Clark, and um, he wants Clark in exchange to not blow up Earth. Um, and Lois Lane, now before I go into what I think about her, can I just make a point here, Lois Lane is not Ginger. She's not Ginger in the comic books, in the previous movies, she has always, even in the TV show, she has always been a brunette. A brunette. Not Ginger. So why did they get someone who was Ginger to play her? I don't know why, and I've forgotten all these actors' names, because I really... I mean, I'm not, I'm not really here for the actors, I'm here for the characters in the, series, in the movie, so I'm not really here for all that, but regardless... 
Why? Why? I, I... Ah! I mean, I, I can't even form words. It's it, it's stupid in a sense, because, I mean, you throw away the sort of rule book on how to write. I mean, it'd be, it'd be the equivalent. It'd be the equivalent of making Mary Jane blonde with... I, I, it just looks wrong. It looks wrong, basically. It, it doesn't fit the mythos and the previous renditions of Superman, Man of Steel, and so on. But anyway, oh goodness, I'm so angry about that. Anyway, um, then she basically um was um actually be before I go into anything else, she was. Uh, following Clark into his scout ship, wh where it, where he learns who he is, um, which uh, was supposed to be his fortress of solitude. But one of the things I really hated about the film was they didn't play around with the idea that there was established in Superman Returns, which was the idea that crystals is what made the Kryptonian people great. That the ability to um, use one tiny little crystal give it a uh, power of energy, so heat or water or something, and the crystal would grow and it would uh, change matter and you could grow whole continents from a simple crystal. They didn't play around with that idea and it just, I mean, they, they didn't make any point with that idea and it was just a bit dumb really as far as I could tell. But they didn't. I mean, it was an idea that was so clearly established in Superman Returns, and why they didn't carry that through onto the Man of Steel, I don't get it. I don't get it. But anyway, um, moving on. Yeah, Superman um, surrenders himself to the police, and they take him in to talk to Lois um, after he uh, saved her life on, on this sort of ice, ice shelf ship thing. Um, and, and there's a lot of innuendo going about on, on, on that scene. I'll just give you one example, um, which was uh, he was on top of her, um, checking out her wound because one of the uh, automated drone thingies had smashed her uh, sort of rib cage area, and she was uh, she had a hemorrhage, and he said he needed to uh, got the proper word again. Uh, basically, he had to color cauterize. I can't form words. Um, basically, he burned her with his laser vision and it healed the wound. You have the name for that? Leave it in the freaking comment section. I don't care. That's not what the point is. Anyway, um, there was a lot of innuendo going about because he said... Um, I mean, she basically questioned him because uh, he was just a man or whatever. And he said, I can do things other people can't do. And it was a bit innuendo -ish, But anyway, uh, moving on. Uh, so he's in this room with Lois and she's saying, oh, uh, well, what does the S stand for? And he says it's not an S, it's a symbol of hope. Because of what was on the armour, it was on Krypton, the S meant hope. And, yeah, I mean, that was fine. I, I haven't got no problems with that, but, you know, whatever. Uh, and um, she, she was about to say Superman. And then, uh, as you saw in the trailer, she gets rudely interrupted by the calm thing. And then he's uh, X-ray vision, seeing all the people behind the... Um, sort of mirrored glass that always get in uh, police programs, but whatever. And so he surrenders himself to Zod, which, and then he takes them aboard the ship, um, the prison ship that they were on, and uh, he basically wants Zod basically wants to create <coughs> a brand new Krypton on Earth, but the process of terraforming will ob obliterate the human race. And um, yeah, that's that's not good. So Superman basically rejects that, um, and there's a cool action sequence where Russell Crowe appears in the ship uh, because she put in like a pin key thing, which was also in the shape of the S or the hope symbol, and uh, Russell Crowe is saying, "Shoot left, shoot right, shoot forward, behind you," and you know it's very exciting. And then he sends her off in a pod to uh, get to find out a plan of how to defeat Zod and his evil people. And then there's a scene where one of Zod's lieutenants, who's this woman, uh, attacks a military officer and then the attack and then the same woman attacks him later and it's, you know, one of these sort of mini plot line points that's supposed to, I don't know, be ironic or interesting. I, I don't know. I, I don't know what it was there for. 
and actually, an another point that I didn't like about uh, Man of Steel was that there were too many lens flare effects in the film. I mean, I felt like it was being directed by J.J. Abrams. I felt like he'd come on momentarily to, like, j just come off from Star Trek in the Darkness. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll work on the end of this film. And basically, there were lens flares all the time. And my eyes were hurting by the end of it. It was worse than Into Darkness and the original Star Trek film. There were so many lens flares. Like, there was a point where Superman was uh, coming out of this scout ship, which was his Fortress of Solitude thing. And um, Fortress of Solitude ship that he got from Krypton. And um, the lens flare off it was just like pure white. And it was, oh, getting flashbacks just thinking about it. But um, anyway... We uh, then find that Superman uh, has to defeat Zod in order to, you know... Uh, basically, I'm skipping a whole lot of plot points here, but basically, um, they put a gravity machine on, like, somewhere in India, and then they were in New York, or... Uh, no, no, they weren't in New York, they were in Metropolis. What am I talking about? They were in Metropolis, and they connect a gravity well all the way through the centre of the Earth, and they use that gravity well to terraform the planet by basically um, sending gravity surges between one uh, one point and the other uh, what the, these gravity ships and they were, basically it's a gravity laser well thing that tears through the earth and terraforms the planet to suit the Kryptonian needs okay <laughs> now then Superman obviously stops it um, with some difficulty uh, because uh, the Kryptonian technology has this ability to form shapes out of a whole load of little sort of met metallic beads, and they were forming tentacles and trying to tear them out the sky. And it's a, bit, it's a bit great action sequence. One thing this film does well, it has a great deal of action. It that there's there's no doubt in my mind this is an action adventure movie. Th there's no doubt about that. But in terms of so, some of the action was a wee bit off, like when uh, Zod and Superman have the big boss fight at the end. Why? How did Zod get laser vision? I, I, would, I would... Please, please someone answer this question. How did Zod get laser vision at the end? I don't know. It, Whatever. And then right after that... Um, so yeah, they, they have the big boss fight at the end, and uh, then, then Lois is saying uh, it's bad luck to something on the first kiss. No, no, it, it's... All goes down the hill after the first kiss, and he says... I think that only applies for humans. Oh, ha, ha, ha. And there were a lot of freaking stupid jokes like that through the entire film, but whatever. Okay, that's the film covered and the story covered. Now let's get into the positives and negatives of the film. Basically, the positives about it, there were great, great action sequences, relatively funny jokes, good backstory, and good clarification of a lot of different things. Negatives, too many lens flares, um... Some of the repetitive points did get a bit annoying, but luckily there were no rep repeating scenes. All the scenes were individually shot, which was good. Good uh, bonus from Superman 4 there. Um, what do I think of the film overall? I enjoyed it, if not for this new cinema experience, which was a bit crap. But, I mean, I enjoyed it. It was okay. And then finally, I mean, would I see it again? Maybe. Not in the cinema, though. I, I think it, it's, not a, it's not a cinema movie. It's definitely a DVD buy, but... And if not a DVD buy, certainly a rent, but not cinema quality worth, but whatever. Um, I'll, I'll get to the final verdict now, but uh, the final verdict for Superman Man of Steel is a 6 out of 10. It's not bad, could have been better, but I mean, o overall, I enjoyed it, action was good, quality was good, R romance was a bit off. Too many lens flares, and at the st very start of the film, it felt a bit slow introducing Superman because he he was a bit messing about saving some guys on an oil rig near the start of the film, and I felt like they could have left that out because the film was two hours and twenty minutes long, and I felt like it could have been two hours if they'd done the editing a wee bit better. So the editing was a wee bit off, not much though, but yeah, I'll repeat that again. The final verdict for Man of Steel: six out of ten. What are your thoughts? Comment below. Let me know. I've been the Banta Guy, and I'll see you in the next review. Like, comment, and subscribe for more. Bye-bye.